You know, most of the time when someone brings forward an idea for a new weapon design, it's something understandable, right? All right, guys, we need ideas for new weapons. Gunner, what do you got? Okay, what about a big rocket launcher? Okay, that seems pretty cool. Perfect. Now, what about for you, Scout? What do you got? Well, what about some kind of energy rifle? That's kind of sci-fi themed. I like it. I like it. Good, good. Now, Driller, what do you have? I want to shoot slugs. What? I want to shoot slugs. You know, like that stuff that turned that guy into the Joker. Okay, well, I don't know if R&D is going to be super excited to do something. We already made it. What? Yeah, we already made it. Here's the prototype. Huh? What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to the channel. It's time once again for another weapon guide video and this one promises to be very interesting. If you are unfamiliar with this series, here we go through each of the weapons the classes have access to and talk about the basic premise of them and how they work and function, before going into the overclocks those weapons have access to so you can see if you want to add them to your build. There's a full playlist of all these weapon guides so you can see the one that I have done covering your favorite weapon. For today we are finally finishing off the driller's arsenal of primary weapons and talking about what is in my personal opinion the strangest weapon in the game to date with the corrosive sludge pump. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about the sludge pump and the kinds of tricks and quirks it has access to that make it the driller's best primary weapon. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss another upload. Fueled up and raring to go. So the sludge pump is, as I said, probably the most unusual weapon in the game and has some very interesting factors. The corrosive sludge pump is the third primary weapon for the driller, so you will have to play him somewhat in order to unlock it. It fires corrosive sludge capable of melting enemies. It consists of a number of pipes and valves wrapped around a fuel tank with a nozzle. Kind of looks like he just threw it together. The sludge pump has two firing modes. Tapping the fire button will fire a single fragment of sludge, and holding the fire button down and releasing will fire a sludge bomb that causes several fragments to fly out upon impact. When a corrosive projectile impacts an enemy, that enemy is covered with sludge and takes damage over time. When the projectile impacts a surface, it creates a corrosive puddle that causes damage over time to any enemy walking over it, along with slowing them down. So the sludge pump is certainly an interesting weapon, and using it compared to the flamethrower and cryo cannon isn't quite as straightforward. For one thing, you can actually use it very effectively for pre-locking down an area. You can coat a tunnel or choke point with goo and watch the bugs struggle to make their way to you, all the while being damaged and slowed in the process. One thing about the puddles of sludge is that they can actually be lit on fire and turned into flaming sludge piles that do even more damage to things stuck in it. A lot of this boils down to the sludge pump being very good at two things, applying damage over time to a single target, and having heavy spread across many targets with the puddles that are set up properly. It can be used in either of these strategies, and its overclocks can help you to achieve either one of these goals. Heavy duty excavation ain't no fun a thing. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to go over the overclocks themselves. As of Season 4, the Sludge Pump has 6 overclocks with the standard split for 2 of each category. Next, as always, we'll go through each of them and talk about what they do and the kinds of ways that you can utilize them. So with that, let's start with the clean overclocks, and the first one on the list is the Hydrogen Ion Additive. The description reads, Experimental additive that activates on impact gives a small improvement to the corrosive damage over time and slowdown effect of direct hits. So this simple overclock gives your direct hits a bit more damage and slowdown power. In terms of numbers, the stat screen just says a stronger damage over time and slowdown effect, but the numbers actually translate to a 50% increase in damage and about a 15% increase in slowdown. So this is for when you want to go with the route of hitting enemies directly with your sludge shots in order to take out enemies. Now it doesn't matter whether it's a normal or charged shot, which is nice, but I would say it's most likely suited better for a non-charging build to get the most benefit out of it. The next clean overclock we have is AG Mixture. This one reads, Anti-gravity pellets suspended in the sludge let the projectiles fly further and faster. So this overclock essentially gives the weapon more range as well as not requiring as much lead on the weapon's shots. To be specific, it increases the projectile velocity by 30% and causes gravity to not affect the sludge projectiles as heavily, basically meaning that they will not fall to the ground as quickly. So first, before we go further, can we just take a moment to absorb the fact that neither one of these clean overclocks are simple ammo increasing ones like every other weapon we have covered in the game, but they actually have effects other than just giving you better ammo efficiency, which I think is very interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out, but as for the overclock itself, it is simple in that it basically gives you better control of your shots at longer range. It's a good overclock to use if you are just getting started with the sludge pump and are not used to the way the projectiles function. 
Moving over to the balanced overclocks, first we have the volatile impact mixture. This one reads, special mixture greatly increases immediate projectile damage. However, the volatile compound evaporates quicker, reducing the duration of the corrosive and slowdown effects, as well as the puddle's lifetime. So this one lets you double down on the damage of your shots at the cost of having their effect durations reduce. Going through the numbers, it gives you plus 16 to your normal shot damage and plus 48 to your charge shot splash damage. This is counteracted by a decrease in the effect duration of the damage over time effect by two seconds and a decrease in the puddle lifespan by three seconds. So this overclock essentially turns the sludge pump as close to a normal firing weapon as can be by giving more raw damage to your projectiles while weakening their extra damage and slowing effects. This one is nice to use, but personally, I feel as though it takes away some of what makes the sludge pump really effective at what it does. The lingering damage and heavy area control is what makes the sludge pump really useful, and taking that aspect away from it, or at least hindering it to some degree, which is what this overclock does, to me at least doesn't seem like something that I want to do. But if it is something that you want to do, or if you have a way to capitalize it that I have not discovered yet, then go right ahead. Oh, jeez, look at the butt on that. The second balanced overclock we have is Disperser Compound. The description says, charge shots break apart into more fragments on impact, and each fragment is more potent. However, the initial damage of the charged projectile's impact is reduced. So this is for those who like to use charge shots to spread their corrosive goo all over the map to have insane coverage. Going over the stats, it reduces your charge shot splash damage by 24. However, it adds six additional fragments created with charge shots and increases the damage of those fragments by four. So while technically, yes, your charge shots are not doing as much direct damage, they are still doing a lot more damage in the sense that they spread damage further and wider with the amount of sludge puddles that they create. This would be great on mission types that require large area coverage, like on-site, point extraction, or even sabotage missions. You can pair this up with mod upgrades like Super Saturation and Tier 3 for very long-lasting and powerful puddles. Essentially, if you want to cover the whole cave system so much that it would make even the Goo Bomber jealous, then this is the choice for you. On that note, next up, it's time to go over the unstable overclocks, and the first one for the sludge pump is the Goo Bomber Special. The description reads, The addition of finely tuned timed separation compounds caused the charge shots to leave a trail of sludge as they fly through the air. However, the projectile depletes its mass as it flies, dealing less impact damage as fragments separate and completely expiring once all fragments are dropped. So this one changes the way the sludge pump fires entirely and how you use it. Going through the numbers, it adds plus four to the charged fragment count, fragment damage, and lifespan of the puddles. However, now charge shots do not break into fragments on impact, but instead drop those fragments as they fly through the air over time. So to try to explain this overclock a little bit better, instead of spreading the goo fragments in a radial area around the impact point, instead it spreads in a more linear pattern as the projectile moves forward through the air. Once it impacts the terrain or all of the fragments are expired, the initial projectile ceases to exist. While it may seem like a very weird change, it actually allows you to have a lot better control of where you are using your goo to cover. You can set up almost like a moat of goo that the bugs have to cross in order to get to you, which can be very effective when deployed properly. I would recommend getting a good amount of practice with this one since you will have to adjust your brain slightly. If you can adjust, however, this overclock can cover a ton of ground and can make defending locations very easy. The final unstable overclock option is the Sludge Blast. This one reads, The charged shot cohesion is disrupted on firing, instantly shooting out fast-moving fragments in a shotgun-like blast. While spectacular, the modification results in reduced ammo capacity and an extended reload process. So this overclock option is just great, because it turns your charged shots into a goo shotgun blast. To go over it a little bit more, it reduces your maximum ammo by 40 and increases your reload speed by 0.6 seconds. However, it doubles your projectile velocity and also gives you the actual sludge blast ability. Now, what does the sludge blast itself do? Well, it's actually quite self-explanatory. You literally shoot the goo in a shotgun-like blast when you use a charged shot. The longer you charge it, the bigger the spread. It's incredibly satisfying and fun to use this thing on bigger enemies, and it allows you to play a little bit more aggressively and up close and personal with the bugs. Honestly, this one is not too hard to use and is just a lot of fun to use as well. If you want to be a sludge blasting toxic crusader maniac, then you can certainly use this overclock extremely well. Obstacle! More like a granite smoothie once I'm done! So with all these overclocks a bit more explained, hopefully you have a better idea of how to use the sludge pump, as it is a little bit more different to use than some of the driller's other weapons. Like I said at the top, this weapon is odd. 
However, it is still very useful and can be devastating when put in the right hands. You can play it safe with the hydrogen acid additive, go for the full coverage with the disperser compound, or rain sludge from above with the goo bomber special. Whichever way you go about it, there are plenty of ways the sludge pump proves that it is the best driller primary weapon. Well, that covers the sludge pump and the overclocks it has access to and how you can use them to great effect. Now you can decide if it's the right primary weapon to add to your build. If you guys like this and want to see more, make sure you check out the playlist of other weapon guides that I've covered so you can see the ones that I've done of your favorite weapon. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.